When a presidential campaign is going as badly as Kamala's is going, aren't aren't Democrats embarrassed? Don't you think there's some level where they say, gosh, this is really, this is kind of bad. There's a montage that Fox News Channel put together of, of all of her allies pretending that it's normal and justifiable that she won't hold press conferences, that she won't give interviews, that she's essentially trying the Biden in the basement strategy of 2020. This montage was perfect. I have incredible confidence in both the vice president and Governor Walls. They have shown that they are happy warriors. They are able to answer tough questions and they are eager eager to get back into the debate. He does not have to do it, Kara. I'm going to just cut to the chase. In fact, she's put out policies on her campaign website. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's truly interested can go and read about them. She's done interviews, and I know that we would love or you would love to see her sit down every single day with CNN and do interviews. But it's that she's a very busy person. I just said I'm not going to vote for her. not running for perfect. She's running against Trump. We have two choices. And so there are some things you might not know her answer to. (laughs) <laughs> there may be things you don't know, but she's running against Trump, so that's all that matters. That's all that counts. Oh, my gosh. And and the one that just, every day I wake up, I've got a routine every single morning. I wake up, and I go through my resources, and then I forward what I want to use to my team. You know, back in the day, uh, they used to hand me stuff to talk. Well, now it's like I drive the, the boat and they these drive the ship. And these guys are great. I got the best team in broadcasting. Everybody from Will in South Carolina screening the calls to Tracy here with me in Florida as my producer, Christian, my, my video producer in New York. And, of course, next to him is Eric Hansen, my longtime operations manager. And a, a great support folks like Robert Haley, our engineer, and, of course, Joey Hudson, our correspondent at large and our guest host. Nobody better in, in the business than this team. And, uh, frankly, they, they do a good job of making me look pretty good. And every single day I wake up and I think, what madness am I going to see today? Today's craziness, the New York Times has leaked details about her scheduled visit to the southern border Friday. That's right, she's going to go to the border less than six weeks before the election. She's off to the border. Now, meanwhile, last night a very embarrassing video popped up. This is a resurfaced video that shows how she really feels about the border because everything she's saying right now about any policy is the complete opposite of what she's always stood for. She is a far-left, dangerous, radical extremist from San Francisco. The world knows it. Everybody knows it. Everybody gets it. Everybody realizes who she is. Well, when she was a senator in 2018, she was at a parade, and the parade was held for the hate crime hoaxer, Jesse Smollett. Remember that scum? The guy that lied about being attacked by MAGA-wearing, you know, Trump supporters, MAGA hat-wearing Trump supporters in 20 Below Weather in Chicago? Guy wound up, as I said, pretty sure he wound up in jail for it, didn't he? Uh, he was he was beaten up by men during a Chicago blizzard. Put a put a, a rope around his own neck. Well, Kamala was marching around in a parade for the guy, which you know there's a so certain poetic justice to that, right? To have Kamala with Jesse or, or Jussie. But listen to what she was chanting in the parade. Good old Doug, down, down with deportation. We don't need to deport no migrants. Come on. We got to keep them right here where they can be happy and loved by all of us. And now she's off to the border after telling, I, listen, I could play this clip a gazillion times, Kamala sitting down 
with Lester Holt not that long ago on NBC. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't I don't understand the point that you're making. She is so bad, even Democrats are making fun of her. How about Al Gore? You don't hear from him very much these days. I mean, he's a gazillionaire because he scammed everybody with all of his, uh, you know, green, his old, his green projects, you know, and told us we were all going to be dead by, you know, 2019 because of climate change. But even Al Gore's making fun of her. Check this out. He's on some panel somewhere. I, 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 this is the long version. I don't want the real long version, Christian. Isn't there a shorter version of this? We'll, we'll clip it here. You got to hear this. This is Al Gore mocking Kamala Harris, who, you know, she she walks around telling anybody who will listen, I was I was raised, I grew up in a middle class, middle class family. I grew up in a middle class family. It's all she says. She's like an idiot savant. She's like Rain Man. Five o'clock, time for Judge Wapner. I grew up in a middle class family. I grew up in a middle class family. Five o'clock, time for Judge Wapner. Check Check out Al Gore making fun of her. There's I a, want to point out that Kamala Harris grew up in a middle class family also. <laughs> They're all laughing. They're Thank laughing you. at her Thank and you. laughing at him and laughing at the Senate. They're mocking her because she's such a terrible, terrible candidate. And it just, it cracks me up like, Nobody's business. 800 655 Mike, great having you along for the ride. How will the watch how the media treats her visit to the border Friday? That one truly blows my mind. It'll be, oh, look at the borders are. She's she's looking at the conditions of the border, and it shows she's really serious now that if she gets if she gets elected, she's really gonna be tough on the border. Look at the border czar at her border. <laughs> this is like a this is like a bad TV show. I'm telling you. Every day it's a new one. Welcome in. Eight, we're in the Relief Factor Studios. 800 655 Mike. Mike Gallagher. A lot of text messages coming in on the My Pillow text line, which we always appreciate. Here's one from Georgia. Mike, they are absolutely buying it. I have a brother who's a nuclear engineer and buys everything that she's saying. They're they're brainwashed from listening to this crap from the mainstream media for years. Here's uh, Florida. Mike, these crazy Kamala supporters will just say that all politicians lie and she's the lesser of two evils. Some people are too lazy to pay attention to the policies, and they're only voting for the personality that they like better. Which, you know, hey, if that happens, we're going to deserve the country we get. If that happens, the misery that we're going to be put through because of these horrific Kamala policies, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll be our own fault. Victory is within our grasp, and we got to understand that. We have a way to fix the miserable condition that the Democrats have put us in. Jesse Waters is, I, I think he's becoming my my Tucker replacement. And Tucker, incidentally, doing this great nationwide tour. And I had a friend who was going to see, I think Tucker was appearing with Roseanne Barr last night in Dallas. He's got all these cool people that he's traveling with and doing these uh, in-person events. But, but Jesse Waters, who ostensibly replaced Tucker uh, in, in that time slot, He's a smart young guy. I don't even know. How, how old is Jesse now? Is he in his 40s? I mean, he he is um, funny and got a terrific personality. We've interviewed him before, and I've known him for years, and I'm happy for his success. He said something last night that, that made so much sense. Uh, and I wonder, are Kamala supporters stupid enough not to figure out that she's running – on fixing the problem, the problems that she created. They were asking her the same questions every time. How are you going to fix the border and how are you going to lower prices? And she couldn't answer the questions. These are problems she created. 
And she's running on fixing the problems that she created, but she won't tell you the solutions? Absolutely not. One of the surrogates says, well, you know, not everybody needs to know everything. (laughs) We still don't know why she hid Joe Biden's mental decline. Or how about this question, Kamala Harris, why'd you let 20 million illegal aliens into the country? Or Kamala Harris, well, why did all the prices go up when you were in charge? And why didn't you do anything about it? Or why is the world now in a mess when it wasn't under Donald Trump? These are easy questions. Or how about, um, why do you want us to pay for sex changes for migrants in detention? Why did you want to legalize prostitution? Why did you want to decriminalize heroin? (laughs) <laughs> These aren't just a few things. This is everything. That's true. That, I mean, uh, uh, those and those are all easy, easy questions. Probably not an easy answer because her answer is, I'm a rabid, far left, crazy San Francisco progressive. That's the answer. I'm to the left of wacko comrade Bernie Sanders. That's how bad I am. And I want your vote. <laughs> That's the answer. And now she's going off to the border. New York Times. She may, Ms. Harris may give remarks about border issues during the visit. <laughs> Six weeks before the election, she's finally going to the border. You'll be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, this is such, I, honest to gosh, I feel like I'm in an insane asylum. And we got legitimate people. On a, uh, smart people, right? Wink, wink. Oh, she's a good American democracy. Is it? How about historian Douglas Brinkley? Check out this clown from MSNBC talking about what's at stake on November fifth. Well, what's at stake? With about forty-five days left, what's at stake? American democracy, nothing less. Uh, Donald Trump is a usurper of democracy. He's a wrecking ball. Um, we, you've been talking today, rightfully reminding people of January 6th, but the, the, uh, the hellscape he's developed of dividing our country, we have a chance to unite. Now, that guy's supposed to be a smart man. The circus has come to town. Now, if you take him seriously, though, and maybe the Justice Department does, you try to get Trump killed because that may be the only way to stop him. 